So you just made your first photography website and chances are people are telling you to start blogging because it helps with SEO. Well, I don't know about you, but I absolutely hate blogging because I'm a photographer and not a writer. The biggest flaw about blogging in any website provider that I've used is that blogging was designed for writers and not photographers. I've never felt satisfied after publishing a blog post because my intention was to tell stories with my photos and not with words. That's why in this video I want to talk to you about Exposure, which I believe is the best website provider right now that is made for photographers trying to tell stories, especially photojournalists. Exposure was designed with photographers in mind. It is important to be able to publish the work that you want to be hired for and present it in a way that's clean yet very captivating. I want to walk you through Exposure and what it's like publishing a story on their platform and why some of the tools and features that they have really make it the best website platform for photographers looking to tell stories. So this is what it looks like on the homepage once you've become an Exposure user. As you can see at the top, there's a simple navigation bar of home, stats, settings, subscribers, and billing. I've already published one story, Cubans of City Park. I have one in the draft right now. So once you've edited a set of photos that you've captured, whether at a cultural event, a protest, a unique travel experience, then you can start a story in Exposure. I will be creating a story with a set of photos from the first Puerto Rican parade in Reading, Pennsylvania in over 20 years. So let's start a story right here. Right off the bat, I love the emphasis on the cover photo, which is the equivalent of a cover story photo. The significance, I feel, is not to be underestimated. And I think that Exposure highlighting a cover photo that much um, says a lot about them. So, you know, let's just find a photo that we think best brings the energy from this collection. So, you know, I'm scrolling through, let me find the right one. I think this one's probably gonna be the cover photo. You can add a title, so Puerto Rican Parade in Reading, PA. I like this little subtitle feature, which you can use to give a potential viewer a hint or even a standout quote that you feel can attract them to read more. I have a poem from Anthony Orozco, who's also a journalist, that I'm gonna probably use maybe one line from that poem, and I'm gonna place it here. So I'll do that later once we get through more of the tutorial. So we have our cover photo, we have our title, we're gonna add a subtitle later, so we can begin our story. Now, it makes sense to start with text, given that you already have a cover and a title. I feel like adding a photo right after the cover photo would kinda take away the significance of the cover photo and just not be presentable in the way that I just want to do the story. Me personally, you can do whatever you want creatively. So add text only right here. So real simply, you get a new block and you can add text. I'm gonna add the first line of the poem just to start off this story. Chrome cover Jeeps, crotch rocket motorcycles, and a thousand bodicos on foot. Now I want to add my first set of images. I'm gonna place two images I feel that I can use to draw the viewer in and make them feel like they were there from the beginning of the story. So I have these two where the host and the city council address the crowd and poet Abel Andrea hypes the crowd up. So right here, I'm gonna add a photo set block. And as you can see, I can select a few photos. So I'm gonna add this one. I'm gonna add one more photo. I can add up to nine photos in the photo set, which is really nice. I got the poet right here. I love this photo set. We have two photos that I think equally tell the story in a chronological manner. We have city council and a potential new mayor addressing the crowd, really inviting them and welcoming them to the parade and the festival. Then you have this poet from Puerto Rico at this Puerto Rican festival really hyping the crowd up. And just from the emotion he's given in this photo, I think once people read this first line of the poem and then you see these two photos, I think it really draws them in. You know, let's just add another text. So as you can see, really simple, really intuitive, very user friendly. Add another stanza from the poem, I'll fix it later grammatically and all that. This is what I really love about Exposure, it's just the different photo features, photo-centric features that they provide to their users. So we have this photo set here of two photos, but now I can add a full width photo and you'll see just how beautiful um, it really does look. So, you know, let's pick this one. I think this one has a full width photo is going to really, really pop. And look at this when you scroll down, like just look how amazing this looks. And we haven't even published it. It looks amazing. I feel like this alone makes exposure worth it. If you're a storyteller using photos or you're a photojournalist and you're out there doing freelance projects or you're creating projects that you maybe want to potentially pitch to 
clients in the future. So that looks amazing. So now let's show you a little bit of variety of the photo sets. So last time I only used two photos here, let's pick four. So now I've added a new photo set. So in the first photo set, we only use two photos as you can see right here. And in this one, we have four different photos. Now, one thing that I love how easy this website really is to use is that you can easily rearrange your photos with a click of a button and it automatically updates. So depending on the order I wanna tell the story with with the photos, I can do that. Or if I wanna make one photo stand out more than the rest of the other photos in the set, I can easily just say fill an entire row with the click of a button. And as you can see, look how amazing this looks. So now you have these two photos taking up this row. You have one photo taking up this row. Um, and it just looks um, incredible, I believe. So we've added a few photos already. We have the cover photo, we have the title, we have the poem. And you know, we want to check our progress. We want to see how is it actually going to look when someone clicks on this. We want to finish the story, publish it, and then see a mistake. See something that the user is going to see that we didn't see from the editing dashboard. So we can easily click preview and automatically you can see how this is going to look when someone clicks on the story. So just look how gorgeous these photos look and just the layout, the template is amazing. The photo sets look amazing. Um, that when they fill an entire row, you can really get a different aspect and feel for the photos and not just blogging with like the lack of tools that they have. So we can go back hit at a story. So I've added all the photos and you have this little footnote feature here at the bottom where you know you can probably credit any additional photographers, any editors, yourself, if you want to extra credit yourself um, or add an ending statement or even credit, um, like for example, um, I can put poem by Anthony Orozco Glyph. So he gets his proper credit at the end of the story as well because his words are just as important as the photos. I wasn't downplaying the fact that blogging was made for writers. I was just downplaying the fact that blogging is designed for writers and not photographers. And that's the difference between exposure Blogging with exposure, if you want to call it blogging, and blogging on any other website. You have features and tools that are made for photographers, and that's why this stands out, looks much more amazing compared to other website platforms. And you know, you, it does have the options right here where you can change the story URL, so we can put like um, Puerto Rican, Parade, Reading, PA, you know, you can change the publish date, you can send an email subscriber notification, so you do have built-in new subscribers in here. So people who subscribe to your Exposure website will get updated anytime you publish a new story, which is nice. They can stay up to date what you're doing. You can put a story password. So if you're actually potentially trying to pitch exclusive stories to clients, to publications, um, you can create a private story and send it to them with a password that they only can access and they can't share it around. Um, they can download photos, you can hide the story, which is nice. And you have other display features, you know, if you wanna do dark mode and all these other little things, keywords for the SEO, because blogging is all about SEO, they say. Also, you can easily link exposure to your website and use your own domain. That way, it looks like it's just part of your website. So when someone clicks stories on my actual website, my portfolio website, as you can see, it automatically goes to stories.mateotoro.com. So it just looks like it's part of my website. It doesn't feel like it's in a whole different platform. It doesn't throw people off whenever they click on that stories um, tab on my navigation on my portfolio. So as you can see, you have one photo, one story that's been published already. Looks amazing. I have it in dark mode. You know, you have this profile picture, your name, your little bio if you would like. They can easily click your website here. You have your social media that they can interact with you with and you have a contact page as well. So again, I think this is something that you can consider as a photographer if you are looking to tell stories. I think Exposure does that very, very well. And I hope this overview of Exposure was very insightful and it really showed you how dull and boring it is to blog on other website platforms. If you're looking to tell more visual stories and just showcase your photographs in a very beautiful and captivating way, I believe Exposure is the best website platform out there right now. I don't believe Exposure is meant to replace your portfolio website because it doesn't allow you to sell photographs. So if that's a very integral part of your photography business, then you still need to keep that portfolio website. If you need to have a long about page on your portfolio website, whether it shows the exhibitions you've had your work in, the publications you've had your work published in, or just a lengthy bio, then Exposure doesn't have that capability as well either. However, if you are a photojournalist who's freelancing, who's pitching, who's just telling stories in your community, in your hometown, places you travel to, then Exposure 
really has the best storytelling abilities right now. I have a link below in the description of this video if you wanna try out Exposure for yourself. You can sign up, I think they have a 30 day trial, get creative on there, tell those stories. I know you're gonna love this platform. Let me know if you have any other recommendations or other websites that maybe have similar options and tools and features that Exposure has that I might just not be privy of. So thank you for watching this video. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.